This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 158, Alcohol and Weight Loss, The 4D Fat Loss Guide for Losing Body Fat and Having a Social Life, part one, by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. A very happy Wednesday to you. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from some popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Usually I read a full post to you, but sometimes I break them up so that the episode isn't too long. And like earlier this week, Today is one of those days. I'll read half of the post today and wrap up the rest tomorrow. Now, lately for me, I've been having difficulty finding motivation to get back into the gym. I don't know if it's the cold weather, well, cold for Southern California standards, or whether it's just my job is keeping me too busy, jobs, I should say. I don't really know what it is, but I actually found on Netflix this um, documentary called Fittest on Earth and it was about the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Now, I incorporate a little bit of CrossFit, some of those principles in my normal routine, but I found myself like watching that and re-watching it over and over, and I found it super motivating just to see what the human body is capable of doing. It's always fun because my wife hates repetitiveness, so she doesn't like to watch movies over and over again. I'm the opposite. I like to re-watch things and just feel like I'm re-experiencing it for the first time. I'm weird like that. So she'll come home and I'll be watching Fittest on Earth again. She'll be like, again, really? But I tell her, it's motivating me to get back into the gym. So it's all good, right? So even if you're not into CrossFit, I recommend you take a gander at it. It's really interesting. All right, before we get into the post today, if you didn't know already, this is one of four podcasts where we read blogs to you. So if you like the format of this show, make sure you check out our other ones. My brother hosts Optimal Living Daily, where he reads you the best personal development and productivity blogs. Then there's Optimal Finance Daily, which covers blogs that are all about saving money and spending less. And we have Optimal Startup Daily, which is perfect for entrepreneurs or anyone looking to make money on the side. You can find all of these in the same place you're hearing this show. And now, let's hear the first part of today's post and start optimizing your life. Alcohol and Weight Loss the 4D Fat Loss Guide for Losing Body Fat and Having a Social Life, Part 1, by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. Alcohol is an interesting drug. Among most people in the world, it's generally acceptable to consume regularly and has been abused by us humans for a very long time. People die every day from this drug, so yeah, keep that in mind. On a fat loss diet, drinking tends to be off limits because of the following reasons. One, it has no nutrition. Two, it's relatively dense at seven calories per gram. Three, it causes us to overeat more easily because it lowers inhibition. And four, it can make us store fat more easily when combined with fatty foods. More on this in a bit. But alas, if you enjoy drinking and want to keep it a part of your life, whether it be for social or other reasons, keep listening. At the end, I'll discuss some guides to help you make better decisions with your drinking and dieting efforts. Storing fat is much easier when drinking and dining. Our bodies are really good at storing fat. And when we mix alcohol into the picture, it gets even better with this process. When you eat a meal, the protein is broken down into amino acids for use in tissue repair and muscle protein synthesis. The carbs are broken down into glucose for the brain and used as energy or stored as glycogen by the muscles and liver. The fat is broken down into fatty acids and stored in your fat cells. Whether or not you lose or gain fat will depend on your calorie balance, deficit, maintenance, or surplus intake. But when alcohol passes through your liver, it converts into something known as acetate, which is toxic to the body. So your system switches from using protein, carbs, and fat for fuel and turns to burning up the acetate. Alcohol alone contains no fat, protein, or carbs and won't convert into fat that can be stored. When we consume alcohol with energy-dense fatty food, it creates the perfect fat storing scenario. And if you're trying to lose body fat or at least maintain your six-pack abs, you must have a strategy for incorporating alcohol into your diet. And if you've ever been out drinking before, you know how it lowers inhibition, making it easier to give in to that large order of chili fries and a few slices of pizza. We've all been there. Combine lots of drinking with all that fatty food while eating about your caloric needs for the day and you're sure to store a good amount of fat that night. When dieting, getting drunk is much easier, so be careful and pace yourself. 
When you're purposely under eating to lose body fat, you're low on two things. One, muscle glycogen, and two, calories consumed. It's not unheard of to get drunk on fewer drinks when dieting. It's happened to me and many others I've coached. So keep in mind that enjoying drinks and managing your fat loss diet is much easier than you might think. If you happen to drink on an empty stomach, then the alcohol is gonna hit you harder because there's no food in your system. So absorption and the mind-altering effects will happen faster than if you had a meal with the booze. And if you're dieting, you're probably not walking around with a full stomach at all times. Here's how to minimize fat gain while still enjoying alcohol. There are two main factors that will enable you to limit fat storage on your fat loss diet. Those are, one, keeping yourself in a dietary deficit, and two, avoiding a high fat intake during the day and avoiding a high fat meal with which you're gonna have some drinks. If you follow those two rules when drinking, you've pretty much covered all your bases. In 4D fat loss, I've set up the diet protocols to keep you in a deficit during the week by alternating high and lower calorie days. But the guidelines below can be used regardless of how you're maintaining a dietary deficit. On the days you're planning to drink alcohol, always have a plan. At best, you wanna maintain your daily dietary caloric deficit. At worst, you wanna ensure you hit your maintenance intake. If you follow those rules, it's unlikely you'll put on any fat from the excessive alcohol intake. If you do go over your daily maintenance calories and lots of the calories are from fat and alcohol, you will store some body fat. Try to avoid this. Remember, alcohol is a form of calories, and to lose body fat, it's all about controlling your calories and maintaining a dietary deficit. It's generally recommended to keep drinking to a minimum, especially when dieting, due to how it affects fat loss and even muscle protein synthesis. So, if muscle maintenance and or gains are a priority, I'd keep alcohol intake to no more than a few times per month. Here are the guides on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Alcohol and Weight Loss, the 4D Fat Loss Guide for Losing Body Fat and Having a Social Life by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. And like I said, I'll read the rest of this post on tomorrow's show. One thing I wanted to add to JC's description of how the liver processes alcohol is the idea of how the liver prioritizes alcohol. Because the body knows that alcohol sitting in the bloodstream is gonna cause some damage, it actually prioritizes alcohol metabolism so that the liver, its signal says, okay, we've gotta get rid of this alcohol sooner and not worry about processing anything else we've eaten like carbs, protein, or fat. And what's interesting is it's this prioritization of alcohol that leads to this beer belly that many guys get when they consume too much alcohol over a period of time. What happens is instead of metabolizing fat and getting it into our other body's fat cells, the liver will actually process the alcohol first and then leave the fat to just kind of settle where it ends up in the abdominal cavity where we see that beer belly. I also like that JC mentioned when you consume alcohol in an empty stomach, you'll feel its effects much, much more quickly. In fact, it's estimated that just with one drink taken on an empty stomach, you'll have a peak blood alcohol level within one minute. If, however, your stomach is, let's say, really, really full, you ate a large dinner, it may take anywhere from one to four hours. Just depends on your body. So yes, food slows down the absorption of alcohol. And so I like his disclaimer that if you are dieting, beware of that. Before I go, once again, if you like this idea of us reading blogs to you, come check out our other three podcasts. Just search for the word optimal in your favorite podcast app and all four of our podcasts should come up. That's our 158th episode, if you can believe it. Thank you as always for listening and I'll see you in about 24 hours where Optimal Life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalist, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily, 
be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.